Welcome to Dinosaur National Monument in northeastern Utah. Among all these sandstone fins, layers of mudstone, uh, conglomerate, different sedimentary rocks are bones from the dinosaurs during uh, the Jurassic period. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here at Dinosaur National Monument. We'll head inside to the dinosaur visitors quarry here in a little bit, but I thought we'd start with this trail here. This is the fossil discovery trail, and this has always been one of my favorite places to visit in this monument because you're actually outside looking at some of the fossils and the rocks in which these fossils were deposited in. So let's go ahead and head down the trail and we'll make a few stops along the way and see what we can. So the main rock types we see along the trail here are all parts of the Morrison Formation, this Jurassic Age deposit of um, just sandstones, conglomerates, mudstones. They were all in a continental setting when Utah was much lower in elevation, not nearly as high as it is now. Here we have a paleogeographic map from the Jurassic about 150 million years ago, showing the uplifted mountains to the west in modern day Nevada, western Idaho and down into California caused by the subduction zone that was there part of the Nevada orogeny and then out to the east in the lowlands this is where the dinosaurs were this is the river systems the flood plains the lowlands that make up the Morrison formation which houses the dinosaur fossils we find in the monument here we have a, a nice coarse grained sandstone you might be able to pick out as we look at it on end here some of the cross bedding. These rocks are all tilted at an angle. They're all dipping to the right or to the south because they're all rocks that were uh, tilted during the Laramide orogeny about 70 to 40 million years ago as the Uinta Mountains were uplifted and other parts of northeastern Utah were uplifted. The rocks were tilted and so they now dip to the south at about a 45, maybe 50 degree or so angle. Some of these gray um, units that don't seem to have much vegetation, those are some of the more clay rich or fine grained units, parts of the Morrison Formation. Morrison Formation is a very uh, colorful unit with lots of different rock types, colors, um, kind of a multicolored formation. So we'll head down the trail here a little bit. There's some neat things we're going to see along the way, including some fossils. So this is one of the highlights along the fossil discovery trail is this fin of coarse grained sandstone with some pebbles in there as well, a little bit of conglomerate, all again dipping to the right or to the south, part of the Morrison Formation. And it's in these sands and gravel deposits, these riverbed deposits that we find uh, a lot of the dinosaur fossils that make this area so famous. Um, it's really quite fortuitous that, you know, there was the sequence of events that led to these rocks being tilted on end because that makes the dinosaur fossils a little bit easier to uh, look at and uh, observe rather than if these rocks were still horizontal in terms of their, their texture. But you can see in here some of the pebbles uh, in this fluvial deposit, rounded clasts, making up the various um, rock types we see here, mostly conglomerates, some sandstones. And I'm no paleontologist, so we'll do our best here to find some fossils in this unit. Um, this is the same bed though, can't quite see it because it's up over the hill, but this projects right into the quarry. So this is essentially the same rib of rock that is exposed within the quarry. Uh, they built the quarry over the top of that bed so that to protect those fossils. Um, lots of little bits of chert in some of these pebbles here. Rounded particles. So you can imagine these streams flowing across the landscape during um, the Jurassic period. In some places we get a little bit more fine-grained units in here. It's a little bit more of a sandstone, like right in here. And I'm wondering, you know, there's a lot of these voids in here. I'm wondering if those might have been places where fossils uh, have been removed. So when people think of dinosaur fossils, they often think about, you know, the, the biggest things, right? Like the leg bones, um, 
maybe teeth or claws. And dinosaur fossils are famous because they're, you know, they're large, they're interesting creatures, easy to spot. So they're probably one of the most studied and best understood among all the organisms that have lived on planet Earth. Let's see here. This looks like a piece of some bone right here coming through. Um, you can see it extending back up this way. So there's a little bit of a, a bone fragment there encased in the rock. Um, rest of the unit here is quite gravelly. Let's see if we can find some other interesting fossils. Feel pretty good about that one. Again, not a paleontologist, but I've seen my fair share of bones and fossils in the rock. This looks like maybe part of a vertebrae right up here. Yeah, that's definitely bone material here. These look like big vertebrae. There's one section of a vertebrae, another one, and this one over here is a little bit more broken. Some more bone material right up here. Another bone fragment. Yeah, hard to say what species these belong to, but definitely large bones from large vertebrates. Let's see. Oh, and then wow. <laughs> and then right here at trail level is this massive bone that's at least a meter in length. You can see some of the rounding of it here. Um, and then there's the continuation of the bone down this way. Definitely different material than the rest of the sandstone. It's a little bit polished right here, smooth surface of the bone right there. And realize too that these bones are not original organic material. That's not the bony material that it originally once was. The bony material has been completely replaced um, by mineral material. So it's really, um, you know, a mold or cast, I guess, if, of the original material that made up that organism. Um, let's see what else we have. Looks like there might be one more chunk right here. Another bony fragment. Another one over here. And it's just really cool that they've left some of these just outside. Um, obviously they're in the elements, so they may decay over time. But allowing visitors to see what these fossils look like when they're in situ, when they're still found in the rocks themselves. So, fantastic. And now you can see the quarry sticking up above the hillside. So this fin of sandstone and conglomerate projects right in to where the quarry is there and where they have a lot of the other bed or bones preserved in that bed uh, on display. Really cool. Let's go check out some other stuff. One more cool bone right up here, some sort of limb bone. Um, so you can see it kind of into the rock and then it comes out of the rock uh, right here. Some of the curvature of the bottom part or the lower part in this case of the limb bone. And then a little bit more over here. Uh, just fantastic. It's so interesting to consider that this was a stream bed that dinosaurs were living and also dying around. Um, these dinosaur bones were buried along with the sediments. Then later, expo you know, all the tilting that took place during the Laramide orogeny. Uh, and now to have these exposed at the surface, just a really awesome sequence of geologic events that's led to this point so far. Um, so we'll go ahead and head down the trail and we'll just kind of take it from there, see what's next. So here we are inside the quarry where you can still see this slab of Morrison formation, the sandstone. You can see it projecting, maybe not so well on the camera, but it projects outside the glass there. So they basically just built this structure over this slab of rock so they could um, study and preserve 
the fossils. Uh, so there's some really nice vertebrae that have been exposed and preserved up there. Just a whole mishmash of bones, presumably washed down in a river system, uh, just mixing all the bones together. Notice the bones in some cases are somewhat articulated. You know, you, I don't know if they get full skeletons here or not. Um, looks like some rib bones right here. Let's go down to the lower level here where we can look at some of the bones a little bit more closely. Some of the displays here on the lower level um, of different dinosaurs. So these are, I think these are probably all casts. But still pretty impressive and obviously based on the actual bones that they found. Here we are back at the slab and most of the bones are up high but there's a few here that are at um, just walking level here. So here's some bones that you're allowed to touch. Pretty cool. So if you've never been to a Dinosaur National Monument this might be something that entices you. You're allowed to touch these bones here um, but not obviously climb on them or anything like that. These are all about 150 million years old again from the Jurassic and the reason we don't find any smaller organisms in here you might be like well where's the smaller dinosaurs, birds, reptiles, other organisms is this stream deposit with these gravels in it, it was too high energy it was moving too fast had too much energy um, so anything small that might have been caught up in this fast-moving stream system, those bones would have been destroyed. Um, but these large bones were able to pers persevere and persist and be transported in this big high-energy river system. So always fascinating to come here. Um, I think I got hooked on geology at a young age with dinosaurs. So in, in some ways it's kind of like coming home, coming back to my roots, if you will. Yeah, but there's the indoor dinosaur quarry at Dinosaur National Monument here in northeastern Utah. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this little um, trip into the Jurassic, looking at the bones both outside and then here preserved within the quarry. Thanks for your support of the channel, and we'll see you next time. Take care.